In this video, I'm going to explain the basics of how the Creative Commons works. The Creative Commons is a category of works that are available for everyone to use under certain very permissive restrictions. Works are placed in the Creative Commons when they are published, formally or informally, under a Creative Commons license. There are a variety of Creative Commons licenses, and they can apply to any copyrightable piece of content, with the exception of software. The reason for that is that software occupies a middle ground between copyright and patents, so instead we use GNU public licenses for software, which address these special considerations. Works under the Creative Commons are called open content, and software under a new public license is called open software. So they're parallel, but not the same. If you end up using open software in place of a piece of proprietary software that your students would have had to pay for, it may apply to your 51% bottom line for SUNY OER services, but this isn't something that's been tested. You should definitely check if you think it might apply to you. Anyway, the big thing to remember is that open educational resources are open mainly because they're under a Creative Commons license. As I said in an earlier video, open educational resources are still under copyright. The Creative Commons license doesn't change anything about copyright. It just works within copyright law to give everyone permission to use the work within a few permissive restrictions. But the rights holder still owns the copyright to the work, and they can still publish it and commercially exploit it if they want to. Because OERs are still under copyright, that also means that fair use still applies. That means that if for some reason you can't use the work within the terms of its Creative Commons license, you still may be able to use it under fair use. That doesn't come up often, but it does come up. Here's an important legal tidbit. If you do violate the terms of a Creative Commons license, that license is void. You have 30 days to fix the problem. Otherwise, you can be sued for copyright violation. This might be the point at which you defend yourself by saying that your use was a fair use. But we try to avoid getting sued because it's expensive if you lose and it's disruptive even if you don't. Let's talk a little about the individual Creative Commons licenses. Creative Commons licenses are mix and match. The rights holder has multiple options for what to allow and what to restrict. They are attribution, non-commercial, share alike, and no derivative works. That last one is important to remember because if a work is under a Creative Commons no derivative works license, it does not count as an open educational resource. OERs have to be revisable and remixable. Revising and remixing create deri derivative works, and if those are not allowed, the content is too locked down to be an OER. You can still use the content. It is still free, and you still have the advantages of being able to keep and distribute copies, but it won't count towards your 51% OER bottom line for SUNY OER services. Attribution is the option that is present in almost every Creative Commons license. It is shortened to CCA. This requires that the user attribute the original work and its creator. There are requirements for proper attribution that I will go over later. For now, just remember that you must attribute, and attribution has very different purpose than citing. Attribution has to do with the law, and citing has to do with academic integrity. They look very similar, but the factors that determine when you have to do them are different. The second option is non-commercial. Its abbreviation is CCNC. If the rights holder applies a Creative Commons non-commercial license to their work, that means that it can only be used in ways that don't make money. This isn't as complicated as determining whether a use is commercial for fair use purposes. It's actually pretty straightforward. It doesn't matter if you're for-profit or a not-for-profit organization. It doesn't matter if you're making money. You just can't be using this particular piece of content primarily to make money. You can always contact the rights holder for clarification about whether what you're doing is fine by them. There are questions about whether you can use non-commercial content in a way that involves cost recovery, such as charging enough for a print copy of a CCNC work to pay for it getting printed. For the time being, we have to play it safe and not charge anything when we are using CCNC Open Educational Resources. The third option is Share Alike. Its abbreviation is CCSA. The Share Alike license provision is intended to make the Creative Commons grow and to prevent people from exploiting Creative Commons material without contributing back. 
It allows you to do whatever you want to with the content as long as if you create any derivative works, you put those derivative works under a Share Alike license too. There have been some questions about whether it's okay to put Share Alike content behind a password. After all, if it's locked down behind a password, it can't be shared. But it turns out that's okay, because that's only one copy. Presumably, there are other copies in the wild. What really matters is that you respect the rule that your derivative works of share-alike content also have, sh have to be share-alike content. Share-alike seems like a powerful way to promote openness, but it does have a big downside. Some organizations don't allow their content to be licensed in the Creative Commons, so they can't create derivative works from share-alike content. And YouTube, which is a huge means of finding and sharing OERs, only has one Creative Commons license option, attribution. So share-alike content can't be remixed into a YouTube video. The fourth option, which is not compatible with open educational resources, is no derivative works, shortened to CCND. I still want to talk about it because you can use CCND works in your courses. They're still free. You can still keep a copy and share copies. You can even change the technical format, say from .doc to .pdf, and you can make excerpts. But you can't revise or remix it at all, and that includes important things like translations and updates. Because of that, CCND content doesn't count towards your 51% bottom line for SUNY OER services. Those Creative Commons license options can also be combined in various ways. Almost all Creative Commons licenses specify attribution but you can also have Attribution Non-Commercial and Attribution Share Alike, which are OERs, and Attribution No Derivative Works, which is of course not an OER. There are also more elaborate combinations, such as Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike, which is an OER, and Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative Works, which is not. One thing you might notice is that there is no combination that has both Share Alike and No Derivative Works. Those are fundamentally incompatible licensed provisions. This page is showing the Creative Commons logos, which are gray rectangles with little ideograms that are usually placed in the footer of a web page, the caption of an image, or somewhere else easy and intuitive to locate. The logo is human recognizable, but if it is embedded in the correct way, it is also machine readable for search engines and repositories to be able to recognize the license. It is almost always accompanied by the attribution, which will have links back to the original work, the creator, and the human-readable version of the license. Whenever you create an OER that incorporates other OERs, which is a pretty common thing to do, you have to make sure that all the licenses of the different incorporated OERs, plus the license that you apply to your work, are compatible. The first thing to remember is that if you have any content that was CCND, no derivative works, that can't be included as an OER. You would either have to include it under fair use, which isn't likely, or go back to the rights holder and get a separate individual license to do whatever you want to do. Then that separate individual license, which you may have to pay for, would supersede the CCND license in that one case. The second thing to remember is that if you start out with content under a CCSA, Share Alike license, you have to have a Share Alike license on the final product. The third thing to remember is that content with a CCA license, requiring attribution only, is compatible with everything. It is a great kindness to your future users to put your content under a CCA license whenever you can. And the last thing to remember is that sometimes it gets too complicated to remember, so just go to the CC license compatibility chart. All you have to do to get to it is Google CC license compatibility chart and it comes up at the top of the list. It's just a table with the license options going down and across. If you start on CC BY NC and go across to CC BY, there's a green check. That means those licenses are compatible. If you start on CC BY SA and go across to CC BY ND, there's a black X. That means those licenses are incompatible. You can't use those two kinds of content together, and you can't use content from one to create an OER that goes under the other. The last thing I want to talk about in this very long video is to go briefly into versions and porting. Creative Commons licenses come with versions, and the versions have to do with the changes in the legalese. Those changes are too nitpicky for you to worry about. Just use the most recent version of the license that's available. If a new version comes out, 
your content will still be under the version you put it under. Existing works get grandfathered in. If you don't like that, you can release a new version of your work under the new license. Just be aware that the old version under the old license will still be out there. Porting is only relevant under older versions of the Creative Commons licenses. Versions 3 and up are all ported. When a license is ported, that means it's valid for both U.S. and international ver jurisdictions. When a license is unported, and its content created in the U.S., that means that the license is only valid in the U.S. You'll want content that's under a Creative Commons license that's version 3 or higher, or, if it's a lower version, it has to be ported. The reason for this is that you want the licenses to be valid wherever Empire State College is operational, which includes multiple countries. Also, open educational resources are meant for everyone, not just people in Empire State College or in the United States. This is a thing to check for, but it can be hard to remember because at this point, most content is either a recent version or ported.